You okay? Is it, are you going in the right direction? I don't see any discernible trail at all. Yeah, you said I'm not going to get lost on my back. Well, well, I'm trying my best. <sighs> Whose idea was this? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Woke up to an absolute cracker of a morning. It is stunning. Not a breath of wind. Bright sunshine. Lovely and warm already. <sighs> so nice. Had a great sleep last night. Again, I never sleep so well as I do when I'm on a boat. There is no better feeling, in my view, than waking up in the morning on a boat and kind of watching the world around you. I just love it. What's the plan for today? We've got very light winds, so we don't really need to think about kind of wind direction today. But tonight we get some really strong winds, about 20, 25 knots from the Northeast. So tonight we are going to have to choose an anchorage uh, that has protection from the Northeast, which shouldn't be too hard around here. There's anchorages that have protection from everywhere. What I really want to do is go ashore and, and go for a, light, a nice long walk, like a hike, kind of do some exploring. I reckon we'll find somewhere lovely to spend the day, go for a nice walk, go for an explore on land, see what we can see. I hope you enjoy it. Hello little man, what you doing? Before we do any of that though, we are doing a live feed for our patrons which is exciting because we haven't done one in a couple of months. If you would also like to become our patron, then go ahead and click this link right here. Our patrons get access to all sorts of really cool perks and benefits, and they also ensure that this channel remains free of any sponsored content, which is good for us, and it's also good for you. Anyway, on to the title sequence. We have this idyllic anchorage, um, and honestly, I'd have stayed here for well, probably the best part of a year <laughs> should I have been given the choice. But the weather gods conspire against us. This anchorage, while protected from the south, the west, and almost the east, is uh, is brilliant. The, we've got a strong northerly coming in tonight, and although the fetch from the you know over there is not that great, it does put us on a lee shore anchor just so that we're doing things correctly we need to take change uh, our position so we need to sail um, into the waterways and try and find a protected anchorage a lot of the time you know when it says wind 25 to 30 knots it's it's odd because um, 25 to 30 knots you know, knots it can be 25 to 30 knots and you get exactly what the weather forecast predicts it can often you end up with topical topographical relief so there's mountains and hills all over the place that can mean one of two things it, it, best case scenario is that you end up with you know essentially the lee of the land protecting you from the winds but if you get it wrong you can actually make you can make it worse so if you're too close to a headland and you can actually funnel wind around so and what you do not want to be doing is find out that you're being tossed around that the anchor's coming off the roller because you're tossed around so much and that you're then on a lee shore at three in the bloody morning in a rainstorm. In an area you don't know. We've been there. We have. We have been there and you learn from bitter experience that while the sun is shining and everything is great to not be complacent about weather warnings that come in. So yes, yeah, so we are going to up, up, up anchor and just head off, head off to try and find some shelter and then hopefully we'll be able to settle down, find protection from the predicted, this predicted weather that's coming in and um, you know, set it down for the day again. So what are you doing exactly? Uh, it's just a touchscreen system for, essentially it's just like, rather than having switches like we used to on Ruby Rose. So what are you turning on? Turning off the anchor light, that time, <laughs> and <laughs> turning on the instruments. All, all I would say is this system, there's a full, there, there's mechanical switches down below. So if this all gets fried for some reason, and you know, we get hit by lightning, then we still have a, we sort of a functional way of uh, using the electronics. 
Now, should we uh, get going for it though? Yes. All right, love. Double that, engine turn on, that was fancy. That was just a, like an inch short, yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> this has been such a lovely spot to spend the night. You know, this actually wasn't on the charts, it wasn't in the guidebook, it worked out really well. Not always the case. I've got the anchor chain counter next to me, so I can actually see, it's nice, I can see how much chain there is still to, to bring up and I can see when it's when it's up, so I don't need to wait for Nick to kind of yell at me, very good, I can see for myself, you know, when we're, when we're up. So one of the topics we were discussing in our live stream this morning was um, visibility from these helms. We're going to talk about this 1260 in more detail in a future episode. Um, we've kind of held off, as you have probably noticed if you've been watching this series so far, so far, on kind of commentating too much on the 1260 because we're going to do it all as one part of one episode for those of you who are interested. But what I would say is that, you know, these helm positions, a helm position is always a slightly controversial topic because people have different priorities when they're talking about helm positions. Some people want, you know, the wind in their hair and to be able to steer using a tiller and other people want, um, you know, something really well protected and other people love, for example, like the flybridge. I'll link to it up here somewhere. Our catamaran review series. And if you haven't watched that already and you're interested, in catamaran reviews then please give it a watch we've got 19 reviews um, of pretty much all of the uh, catamarans to date that are built for kind of livable cruises in mind um, so it's not every catamaran on the market but it's all of them that are in our view built for the livable cruiser market and we talk a lot about home position in those reviews and we talk about what we like and what we don't like uh, but I would say that the helm position on these, uh, on this 1260, it's a great test being in these waterways, these big, busy waterways um, of the visibility because, you know, when you're at sea, you have ages to see stuff, you know, things happen pretty slowly uh, when you're out at sea. And most boats that are out at sea, like ocean crossings, um, have AIS, not all of them, but most of them. So I, th I feel like visibility is maybe less important when you're like on an ocean crossing than it is when you are in a very busy waterway like here. So I feel like this is a really good test and it's, it was an even better test in Sydney Harbour because obviously there's a lot more craft on the water in Sydney Harbour than there is here. As I said, I'll leave my full thoughts or our full thoughts and to, to you know, our kind of 1260 experience wrap up episode. Um, but what I would say is I really like the helm position here. Um, you do have some blind spots, you can get around that by just moving your head around. Um, but I think that the compromise between having those blind spots but also being down nice and low when you are in a seaway um, is that's a good compromise to have in my view. Again, not everyone will agree with me. Comment down below, by all means, please comment down below and let us know your thoughts, whether this type of helm position is, you know, your cup of tea or whether you prefer something something else. Um, everyone will have their own opinion and that's totally fine. I don't, I personally don't think there's a right and a wrong. It's just what you prefer and what set of compromises you are more happy to make. So if you want to see that episode, then make sure you are subscribed to our channel. You just need to click the subscribe button. There's a little notification bell and that way you'll be notified when a new episode comes out. those boys on the nose? Yep. National Park boys? Yep, that's where we're heading. I kind of do miss the fact that like, we can't anchor anymore. I understand it's done for environmental reasons, but I don't know, I like I like anchoring. I know, I like it as well. Well, we did it last night. No, I know, and I feel I feel more comfortable at anchor than on boys. Yeah, I, like, I do like anchoring. I guess the thing about mooring fields is that generally they allow more boats in and you can't really mix anchoring and mooring in a crowded field because the swing room is different. So obviously we're looking for a, to pick up a mooring boy. So we need to bring the boat round. Um, I will let you bring it in and I'll pick up the boy. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, seems very straightforward. See the first red boy? It's right on the nose. Yes. Yeah, we're going for that. Alright. You have the helm. So just to talk you through this, we're probably about 100 metres away from the boy. So I'm just starting to drop my speed. 
It's a balance between going quite slowly. It's not stationary when you're actually at the buoy, um, so that neck can pick it up, but also having enough speed to maintain steerage. All I would say is on a catamaran that's a lot easier because you've got your engines, so if you kind of, and also you've got so much width, you know, on a minor hull you have to hit the buoy like at the bow, um, so you, there's no real room for error. Stop it! Get into reverse to bring the boat to a stop without actually bringing it into reverse. Alright! I love it when things work out. Particularly when I'm commentating. <laughs> nice little hike, have an explore of the surrounding area. So? So, yeah, these are the shenanigans that you get into when you don't have a dinghy anchor. Oh, it's improvising. It is improvising. So, yeah, we've tied the dinghy up to like several branches. Um, Fore and aft to stop it drifting. Yeah, because the rocks are all covered in oyster shells. <laughs> Ever since arriving in Pittwater, I'd wanted to go for a nice, challenging hike. Unfortunately, it wasn't always easy to access the official hiking trails from the anchorages, but I'd read in the cruising guide that it was possible to access one of them via an unofficial track in this corner of America Bay. We figured it couldn't be too difficult to find the track and follow it up to where it connected with the trail up on the ridge. I think we're on the right track. Okay, well let's just keep going to find the trail. Well, it was a lot easier said than done. We got lost several times, but eventually we found ourselves at the top of a waterfall with an amazing view over the bay. Well worth it, I think. Worth it? Yes, ultimately. Just someone's throwing in the tree. Oh my god. <laughs> someone lost their Mavic. Well, oh, this is worth it, right? Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Oh, well, that was well worth it. At least I think it was. Still got a bit of a view. So now we get to go back to the dinghy. And that is not, I don't think, going to be easy. In fact, it might actually be more difficult than the trek up. I think this is kind of where we, this is where we got onto this trail, babe. The big tree right in front of you, that is where we had to climb over those rocks. You okay? Is it, are you going in the right direction? Take his deafening silence as a yes. I knew that the rocks would be the hardest bit to get down. This isn't how we got up. Grace. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Uh, I reckon you come back up because we definitely didn't come this way and go around the other way. Let's try that again. My bearings. Yeah, you said I'm not going to get the way back. Well, well, I'm trying my best. Okay. Wait, there's a path down there. Yeah, that looks pretty clear in that direction, babe. I'd be going with that. There's probably, this is like, just a trail that people have made from climbing up the waterfall. There's probably a few different ways of getting down. Yep. Jeez. Yeah. Oh. Whose idea was this? Man, I can hear people. I don't feel like we're on the trail. I feel like we're just kind of climbing down. I don't see any discernible trail at all. 
but that's okay. I can see our boat. Hey, there's our boat. I mean, our dinghy. So we've come down, we've come down too far. Yeah, we've come down in a different way. How do I get down? Did you go this way, babe? I'm seem to be wrapped up in twigs. Yeah, babe, you did good. Well done. Okay, time for me to take my shoes off, I guess. Is that the kettle? That's the sound that the kettle makes. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Tonight. Food, babe, do you want some tea? I don't want to Time for a piece of apple and peanut butter. Does anyone else have apple and peanut butter chopped up and peanut butter spread onto apples? It's a really good combo. And I reckon I'm just going to spend my afternoon just watching the world go by. Falling down. There's no net, no wire. Catch, climb high. My teeth stake to the ground. Lay your bets down. I am still right here. Cheers, baby. Don't Cheers, tell me that it's time again. Time to be. Well, that was an adventurous and busy Sunday. You've been here a week. What are your thoughts about all this? Well. I think that the location is just magnificent. I mean, I guess the, the one thing that I would compare this to is the Morbihan. It's like an inland set of estuaries. Yeah. And that was crazy busy. Like, it was a lot busier than this. Way busier than this. So, yeah. it's quieter. So, yeah, it's like the Morbihan a little bit in that respect. I mean, look, one thing that I am still being absolutely blown away about is how well I'm sleeping. Yeah. Like, I, I haven't slept the night through since we sold Ruby Rose. It's rare, it's, it's, it's rare that I wake up in the morning and I haven't been up for two hours from like two till four just reading, you know, reading news. I'm, I'm loving it, I know, unfortunately. I think this is the last of the good weather for us. Yes. Uh, and autumn arrives. I'm kind of looking forward to some rainier weather so we can test out what living on this boat is like when the weather's not amazing because it's not always amazing all right well listen we'll finish our beers and we'll see you in a minute we're gonna have a barbecue it's barbecue dinner tonight so uh, yeah, we'll see you in a few minutes don't tell me that it's time again time to be my own best friend here in the dream we bought are you here enough if it's fading in the twilight don't leave me alone tonight <laughs> After all the lines we brought <laughs> And all the pain we start I'm gonna love you till the wheels fall off I'm still deciding how much of that I'm gonna actually put onto the internet because I think that probably <laughs> I think probably it does not show us in our best light. I did not put my instructions across well I don't, enough. I, you weren't giving me clear directions. I wouldn't have done it that way. This is what happens and anyone who sails with their significant other can relate 100%. Five minutes later, the teapot's on and the marital bed is warm. <laughs> we only had one argument today and we only made one sailing mistake today. It's a big one. Yeah, I told everyone. <laughs> Why is the boat going sideways? I'm gonna love you till the wheels fall out.